Is this far as you can get? This is as far as you can get. Yeah. I'm hallucinating. Great. Hopefully, I can make it through this meeting. Come on, Scott. Which way? Good right, evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the November 18, 2019, Crest Hill City Council meeting to order. <clears throat> if everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Ray Solomon. Here. Glenn Conklin. Present. Scott Dyke. Thank you. John Vershea. Here. Barbara Scalera. Here. Claudia Gazal. Here. Tina Oberlin. Present. Marco Cody Petro. Here. Nate Elber. Here. Joe Kubo. Here. Okay, I did receive a telephone call from Alderman Dyke. He is on his way. He is uh, running a little bit late, so he will be here, though. Um, you have before you the minutes of the November 4th, 2019 Crest Hill City Council meeting. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman Cola Di Pietro, seconded by Alderman Scalera. For the approval of the minutes of the November 4th, 2019 City Council meeting, questions or comments? Roll call, please. John Vershea? Yes. Barbara Scalera? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Marco Cole Pietro? Yes. Motion carries. And you also have before you the minutes of the work session held on November 12th, 2019. Motion will be in order. So moved. Move. Second. We have motion by Alderman Gazal, seconded by Alderman Cole de Pietro for the approval of the work session minutes of November 12th, 2019. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. John Vershea? Yes. Barbara Scalera? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Marco Cooley Pietro? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we do not have a business promotion this evening, so we'll continue with the agenda. And it is our city administrator, Heather McGuire. Good evening, Heather. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have sent several agenda items for consideration this evening, but the first two deal with the city's um, bonds. One would be a new issuance of a bond, and one would be the refunding of an existing bond. And with that, I have Jen Courier here from PMA Securities to give some opening comments and some brief explanations, so I will invite her to the podium. Hi, Jen. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me tonight. So first off, the city's upcoming bond issues were recently assigned a double A rating from Standard & Poor's, which is wonderful news. The city was previously rated a double A3 by Moody, so this translates into a one-notch upgrade on the rating. Bob Lewis and Andrew Kim informed me that uh, the mayor and administration gave a fabulous tour of the city to the rating agency when they were here for their site visit, um, which went over very, very well. Um, so kudos to all of you. We estimate that that one notch upgrade in the rating will translate into about 0.05 to 0.1% on your overall borrowing rate on both of the bond issues. So in dollars, that's going to translate into roughly one to $200,000. So excellent news all around on the rating. Additionally, that higher rating may draw one to two firms that may not have otherwise bid on the bonds. There are some underwriting firms out there that have certain cutoffs as far as rating category goes as to which issues that they will actually place bids on. So moving from the double A3 up to a double A rating will actually invite more interest and a broader base of underwriters to bid on your bonds, which of course we, we welcome more competition on the sales tomorrow. Uh, with that said, both of the bond issues are slated to sell tomorrow morning. We'll receive bids uh, at 10 and 10.30 a.m., after which we at PMA will finalize the numbers and we'll provide the uh, mayor and Heather with a summary of the results and um, ask for their final sign-off at that point in time. We currently expect the savings on the refunding to actually be a little bit better than estimated, so in the neighborhood of about $1.4 million or 7.5% on a present value basis. So we're looking forward to share those final results with you tomorrow. Um, the bonds will close on December 3rd, at which time those Build America bonds will be considered refunded. And at that same time, on December 3rd, the city will receive funds for construction. Well, that is all great news, and let me offer my gratitude to our, our entire staff here. First of all, to our city administrator, Heather McGuire, to our finance director, Ashley Motika, to our community development director, Scott McMaster, 
to our financial consultant, Mr. Nick Narducci, <coughs> and to PMA, to both Bob Lewis and Andrew Kim, who was here throughout the entire day with us um, a couple weeks ago when we met with Standard & Poor's. And uh, my hat's off to each and every one of you. I know that everybody played a key role. Ashley, you were fantastic during the presentation uh, with all the numbers. And uh, Scott, with the community development, and Heather, you were fantastic also with all of your information that you helped throughout the presentation and the tour. And uh, we had a fantastic job done with from Nick also, and also Andrew and Bob, they led us down the right path. And uh, we really appreciate it because that is gonna be, our, our residents should be very happy that we are being fiscally responsible. They should be very happy that we are saving them money both on what we're gonna do here shortly, hopefully, and also our refunding and, and uh, of the PM of the Build America bonds for the East Sorge treatment plant from 2010, which we saved a lot of money by getting the Build America bonds in 2010, and we are now gonna save $1.4 million to our residents with, with the refunding tonight. So this is gonna be, be fantastic news for us. Everybody should be very happy sitting at this table. Thank you for all your hard work that you did here also, uh, because this is all great news for the city of Crest Hill. We're moving forward in the right direction. Absolutely. Anybody else with comments before we continue? I'll just agree with you. Good job, everyone. Thank you for all your work. <clears throat> Mayor, I think you've said it all already, but it is really great. Uh, I, I, uh, I couldn't uh, it's you know wonderful what staff pulled off on on this and and yes the residents of uh, Crest Hill are the benefactors of this it's a great thing yeah and what is that just for my own curiosity I think we're number three out of the bond list now isn't isn't there like 21 of them or something on the on the list of ratings. your ratings oh that's correct yes so yeah. we're number three out of 21 mm -hmm. that's pretty good it's very good yeah that's very good that is very good. Hopefully, maybe number two, what, maybe in six months? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you, you can try. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> Absolutely. You're already very high. No, I'm happy, I'm happy with, the, with the upgrade of the one. That was, uh, that was great news. Yeah, we were very, very pleased as well. So. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. I'll turn it over back over to Heather for the formalities. Thank you, Mayor. And, and I would also like to reiterate my appreciation to both Ashley and Scott for their um, presentations that they gave to PM, or I'm sorry, to uh, SNP as well, and the preparation of all the materials. Uh, they were an integral part of that, so thank you both very much. Um, and also to the mayor and council for supporting staff and, and bringing these recommendations and, and moving forward with these bonds. I know it was a, a long process. There was a lot of information, and I know it was um, sort of going out on a limb to try to get this new rating. So I think it definitely paid off, and I'm excited for that at a staff level on what that's going to bring in terms of return to the city. Yeah, and this will it will save money for years to come. Absolutely. So. So with that being said, I would like to present the um, first of the two ordinances. Um, the first is an ordinance authorizing and providing for the issue of not to exceed $12 million general obligation bonds, and that is to finance the new city hall and police station. Motion will be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderwoman Gazal, seconded by Alderwoman Sclair for an ordinance authorizing and providing for the issue of not to exceed $12 million general obligation bonds. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. John Frechet. Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Marco Coley Petro? Yes. Nate Albert? Abstain. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Barbara Scalaire? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance number is 1830. Thank you. And the next ordinance is in relation to the refunding of the Build America bonds. This is an ordinance authorizing and providing for the issue of not to exceed $19 million general obligation refunding bonds for the purpose of refunding the outstanding alternate bonds for the Build America bonds. So moved is presented. Second. <coughs> okay, motion by Alderwoman Overland, second by Alderman Cola DiPietro for an ordinance authorizing and providing for the issue of not to exceed $19 million general obligation refunding bonds. Questions or comments in regards to the motion? Mayor, if I could just make a quick comment. Like I've said in previous meetings, I, I just have to abstain from these votes due to my line of work. Um, I'm certainly excited about the, the progress and, and the movements of everything going forward. Thank you. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Nate Elbert? Abstain. Joe Kubal? Yes. John Brache? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Barbara Scalier? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Marco Coldi Petro? Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance number is 1831. 
Thank you, and thank you for Jen for being here tonight. The next item for you for consideration is for the work session last week. We are seeking approval to cancel the December 23rd and 30th work sessions pending any items that may arise. So we will withhold and be able to schedule those if need be. So moved, man. Second. Motion by Alderman Oliver, second by Alderman Dyke for the cancellation of the December 23rd and December 30th work session unless needed to be called at that time. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. John Brache? Yes. Barbara Scalaire? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Marco Colby Petro? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item for consideration is the Will County Governmental League holiday reception. This is seeking approval to pay for all the elected officials who wish to attend that reception, and any elected official who wants to bring a spouse or significant other would be responsible for paying that. So moved is presented. Second. <clears throat> Motion by Alderwoman Overland, seconded by Alderman Cole of the Pietro for a resolute, or this is the Will County, right? Will County, Will County, Government County Governmental League uh, reception. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Joe Kubal? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Barbara Scalaire? Yes. John Brache? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Marco Coley Petro? Yes. <clears throat> Motion carries. Thank you. And the final item I have for approval this evening is a resolution adopting a disclosure compliance policy of the City of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois. This was a recommendation made by Chapman and Cutler, our bond council, to clarify uh, some policies in relation to disclosures on those bonds, specifically targeting any information to the bondholder of any liabilities that arise during that process. So I'd be seeking approval this evening. Is this the one, Heather, where you're the um, officer? That is correct, the so disclosure officer. So I would like to get on the record also that you are the officer? That is correct, yes. So moved as presented. Second. Motion by Alderwoman Overland, seconded by Alderman Cola DiPietro for adoption of the resolution adopting a disclosure compliance policy of the City of Crest Hill. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brache? Yes. Barbara Scalaire? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Nate Albert? I'm staying. Joe Kubo? Yes. Mark Cola DiPietro? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> resolution number is 1059. Thank you. That was the final item I had this evening on a, on a list of heavy items there, but I do have the informational report on file. We will be holding a work session on November 25th. Current topics include the City Hall and Police Station facade, as well as the Republic Services Waste Proposal with additional topics still being developed. I'd be happy to answer any other questions this evening. Any questions of City Administrator? All right, thanks, Heather. Uh, moving on, our Public Works Department, our Director of Water and Wastewater, Mr. Mark Seifert, here this evening. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Mayor and Council. We have nothing formal on the agenda, but I would like to let Council know that our sidewalk replacement and curb replacement from water main break uh, concrete work has begun. Uh, as of last Friday, they started saw cutting. They should be pouring concrete later this week, and uh, restoration soon to follow. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Mark, what was going on at... Um uh, Gaylord and Kate in front, right in front of our, our, our credit union, they, had, they were tearing everything up there? That was, uh, it was even uh, one of the other utility companies, I believe it was NICOR. Okay. We just called, got called out there for an emergency jewelry locate. Okay. NICOR's been, as you know, everyone's aware, NICOR's been doing a lot of work throughout town. Um, and with everybody turning the heat on right now, it's probably a good time for them doing all this work. Thanks, Mark. Any questions? Is that it, Mark? That's it. Any other questions of Mark? Yeah, just to piggyback on the NICOR, that is NICOR that's doing all the digging throughout the city, mostly on the east end of town. Um, I, I've been receiving a couple phone calls here. Some have not left their name or their address to be able, or their number to be able to call them back. But just so you know that we have no control over what NICOR does with the gas lines. They certainly ha have more experience dealing with the gas lines than we do. Um, you know, if you have any concerns or questions of why they're out there now, uh, you should probably call NICOR, not the city of Crest Hill. We are cooperating with them. As soon as we got notified that they were going to be digging, they are making upgrades and improvements to the gas lines that are more than 60 years old. So they are making an improvement, and I'm sure they do work year-round just like we work year-round. And um, so just have some consideration. I am sure and, and uh, confident that they will, they will uh, restore everything that they will damage in your yards or in the streets. Um, may not be until next spring to do the job properly, but it will be restored. Anybody else questions or comments? 
All right, thanks, Mark. Moving on, Community Development Department. Our Community <coughs> De Development Director, Scott McMaster. Good evening, Scott. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have no agenda items this evening, but I do have one announcement. Uh, being that it is less than two weeks from the fourth annual Winter Festival, that will be Saturday, November 30th, uh, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and as usual, that will be right here in, at City Hall parking lot. Um, this year's entertainment will be the Jib Brothers Band and their local uh, Dick Tezak and his friends here uh, of Cresto. And the horse and hay rack rides will be there, live reindeer, pony rides, uh, Santa Claus, and then uh, the mayor <coughs> will be flipping the switch with some special guests from uh, the local schools here. But if you would give me just a minute to run through this year's sponsors, I will uh, rattle them off as best I can. Um, some of the big sponsors this year's uh, Newmark Credit Union, Flooring First, Goofy G's, which is actually an ice cream parlor that will be opening next summer. So they're currently working on construction where they're located, uh, but they were very good enough to um, be a sponsor for this year's event. So we're excited to have them. Window World, Charter Fitness, uh, JM Printers, Remax Ultimate Professionals, American Italian Cultural Society, Firewater, uh, the Lions Club will be there as well. Uh, El Guero, TLC Ingredients, Reasonable Tree Experts, Willow Falls, Hair Cuttery, Oakland Storage or Oakland Avenue Storage, uh, Mayor and Vicki Solomon, Alderman Nate and Jill, Jill Albert, and uh, Alderman Marco and Lynn Cola Di Pietro. So I wish to thank all those sponsors and the vendors this year for uh, making this event possible. Um, I think it's a very good event every year. We have very good weather. Uh, and it's a, just a good chance for a lot of local businesses to get the word out about their business, especially for newer ones like Goofy G's that I think is going to be a big draw this year. So um, I look forward to seeing everybody out there. Should Are they going to have samples? Uh, they are expecting to have samples, yes. Yeah, so we're excited about that as well. So with that, I have nothing. Any questions of community development? And there will also be a table here from the U.S. Census Bureau. That's correct, yes. And the city of Crest Hill has partnered with uh, the Spanish Community <laughs> Center in the city of Joliet uh, for the uh, Census 2020. There will be information that we're going to be passing out. Um, this is very important to the city of Crest Hill also that we get an accurate count because the funding that we get throughout the year to do projects from the state of Illinois is uh, dependent on what our actual census numbers are. So I ask for everybody's cooperation for the Census Bureau to get an accurate count for the city of Crest Hill. They will, we will be taking applications probably at the first of the year for uh, census takers. Uh, there's gonna be online, you'll be able to do it online this year. They're gonna have kiosks at the library. We've, we've uh, set that up with them. Um, you will get a mail copy also. So there's gonna be several ways for you to respond to the census questions. And if you do not respond, then they will take census uh, takers will be walking the community probably in the spring and April and the summer um, to uh, to find out exactly how many people live in your home. So I ask for your cooperation when they do come to the door, when you do receive it uh, in the mail or online, that you do fill it out because it is very important to our municipality that we have the right number so we get the accurate amount of funding that is available through the state of Illinois. Any other questions for Scott? Thanks, Scott. Thank Moving on to police department, our police chief, Ed Clark. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I do not have anything on the agenda this evening. Uh, information is in your packets, and I will entertain any questions. Questions of the police chief? All right. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Moving on to the mayor's report. I am going to uh, give you some information in regards to the 2019 tax levy estimates. We had a work session last Monday, Monday evening. Um, so I am going to give you the general summary of the amounts levied for all funds. The general corporate fund, $1,500,000. The police pension fund, $779,975. The Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, $20,000. Social Security Tax Fund, $20,000. Total tax levy for all funds, $2,315,975. This represents a 1.0499% increase over the 
taxes that were levied in 2018, and we are anticipating to be passing the final levied amounts at the at our December 16th, 2019 City Council meeting. Anything you'd like to add, Ashley, in regards to that? Any nope, questions or comments from Council in regards to the uh, levy numbers for 2019? <coughs> Hearing none, uh, I just have a couple other announcements. Um, Mayor, first, we do need a, a formal vote on oh, that. Oh, we do? One. Yes. Okay. Motion would be in order for those numbers. So moved as presented. Second. Motion by Second. Alderwoman Overland, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal. Questions okay. or comments regards to the motion for the 2019 tax <coughs> levy estimates? Roll call, please. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? No. Barbara Scalaire? Yes. Marco Coli de Pietro? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> okay. Just uh somebody's gotta be different. Good. <laughs> Just a couple comments from the mayor. Um, last week was uh, Veterans Day. I will tell you it's a very busy time here in Crest Hill. Uh, just, just to let you know that my wife and I attended um, actually on the Thursday of the, or Friday of the week prior to Veterans Day, Cheney Manji School had a ceremony at the school um, for all the veterans and there were several veterans that were in the audience. On, uh, Saturday night or Friday afternoon, we went down to Joliet Central since part of uh, Joliet Township High School is in Crest Hills um, area. Um, they do a fantastic job there. They had several uh, veterans present that they introduced and they had uh, band and songs and everything else. That was a very nice program also. On Saturday night, Vicki and I went to Caroline Lakes. They always do a very respectful, very solemn program. Uh, flag folding ceremony there from Lewis University was there also. Uh, and then on, on the actual day, on Monday, <coughs> on Veterans Day, um, we started out at Richland School at 9 o'clock. Lockport Township uh, ROTC <coughs> students were there with a flag folding ceremony. They have a very respectful, very solemn program there. I will say that both of our schools, all three schools, I was very proud how well behaved all of the students were, even the young children were very respectful to our flag, very respectful to the veterans at all three schools that we visited. Um, after that, then we went to the uh, Rialto for the Will County ceremony. Uh, that was held inside for the first time this year. It's usually outside, but due to the cold weather, they uh, moved the venue inside, and there was a very large crowd for that one. And we finished up at Willow Falls in the afternoon, and Valerie does a fantastic job at Willow Falls for all the veterans, and there were probably 50 or so veterans that are at Willow Falls, so they were all recognized. And again, she does a very solemn, uh, respectful job uh, performance <coughs> for all the veterans, for veterans there. Also, in Frankfurt Brass Band was there with the entertainment. Um, so thanks to all the veterans for all the sacrifices you made in your life for the freedoms that we enjoy today. And then also we had two uh, ribbon cuttings in the last two weeks, and the first one was at Robert Sewing Center on Weber Road for their 20-year anniversary uh, celebration. And um, let me see, Alderwoman Sclair and Alderwoman Gazal, Alderman Bershay were present at that one. And then we had, uh, just Saturday, we had grand opening <coughs> ribbon cutting at Speedway Gas Station. Um, that is a beautiful gas station. They are very crowded. They are very busy. They are going to be a tremendous asset to the city of Crest Hill. With it's like a mini grocery store in there. Everything that you can buy, um, um, from food items to alcohol. They will have video gaming there. So it, it was a great location for them. They have a lot of traffic along the Weber Road corridor, and hopefully, it's going to start the corridor moving a little bit quicker than anticipated for some future business along along that corridor. And let's see, there was Alderwoman Gazal, Alderwoman Slair, <coughs> Alderman Verche, Alderman Cole, Cole Di Pietro, Alderman Elbert, City Clerk Hackney, and... Alderman Joe came. Joe came late. Joe came oh, Joe came in? Oh yeah, we, I, we had to get to a wake after that. 
So I missed Joe, but Alderman Kubal was there also. Um, and Scott McMaster was there at both of them also. So congratulations to all those businesses too. We hope that they are here for a very long time also. Okay. Oh, that, can I comment? Just for the record, when I got off work, I went to both of those, even though the majority of the people had gone. I just want the people to know that when I left my job, I did go to both of those on both of those dates. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Moving on. <clears throat> City Clerk's Report. Vicki Hackney, good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I do have one item on the agenda this evening. The Autumn Ridge um, Town Homeowners Association is requesting use of the council chambers um, from 6.30 to 9 p.m. for their 2020 association meetings. These are scheduled for February 6, 2020, March 5, 2020, April 2, 2020, May 7, 2020, June 4, July 2, August 6, September 3rd, October 1st, and November 5th. Request would be to uh, motion to approve these dates, and we have checked the calendar of the dates that are available. So moved. Second. second. Oh. <clears throat> All right, we have motion by Alderwoman Sclair, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal for the approval of the Autumn Ridge Townhomes <coughs> um, use of the council chambers on those dates. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Joe Kubo? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Marco Coley Petro? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Barbara Scalier? <coughs> yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much, and we will notify them. Um, that's all I have this evening. Just very uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, city staff, employees, council, and to the residents. Be safe and enjoy your turkey day. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have this evening. Questions of city clerk? Thanks, Beck. Thank you, Ray. Moving on to our treasurer's report. Glenn Conklin, good evening, Glenn. Well, good evening, Ray, City Council. I'd like to report regular and overtime payroll from 10 28 19 through 11 10 of 19 in the amount of $213,951.37. The only item I seek action on tonight is I request your approval of our list of bills, which totaled in that same time period of $821,224.32. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by Alderwoman Noble and seconded by Alderwoman Sclair for the list of bills, questions, or comments. Roll call, please. Margo Coldy Petro? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Barbara Scalaire? Yes. <coughs> motion carries. I thank you all, and uh, I'm going to entertain any questions if you have them. Any questions of City Treasurer? Thanks, Glenn. Thank you all, and, and happy Thanksgiving. Unfinished business. We have nothing on the agenda. Anybody? New business? Anyone? Committee liaison reports. Me. Tell all the Clark Griswolds out there. The uh, 2019 Christmas Lights uh, Contest is quickly approaching. Uh, forms are available on the website, also here at City Hall. Uh, the deadline to sign up your house is uh, December 6th. The awards will be presented at the December 16th, 2019 City Council meeting. So if you light it up nice and bright, fill out an application, or if you have a neighbor that also lights it up, maybe throw that in their mailbox or drop it off at their house. I go it again in the And the elves will be out judging December 7th through this, uh, December 14th. So if you're displays are special in any way make sure that you have them on that week for the the elves to see thanks anyone else committee or liaison <coughs> reports okay city council comments positive city council comments anything you'd like to share with your constituents uh anyone like to go first this evening Alderwoman woman overland ward three well i have several things um First of all, I do want to congratulate Speedway on their grand opening. It was a little hectic when I went in there. They were still having issues, but they were really the people coming and going. And I want to congratulate M Maria Yakos. She had a grand opening at Willow Falls for her her business. It was sponsored by the Joliet Chamber, but um, several of us did go over there and attend that. That was very nice. I also want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving out there. Uh, have a good time with your families and lastly we were talking a lot about veterans and um, we do we are collecting at, at Newmarket all the Newmarket locations for veterans for wreaths across America which is a wonderful 
wonderful tribute where uh, Newmark will match whatever we collect to double the money for the wreaths. And we really want to try to get as many wreaths on the veterans' graves at Abraham Lincoln as we possibly can. So if you're um, in the area and you'd like to help contribute, we would really appreciate that. And uh, we'd love to really honor our veterans. So thank you. Alderman Cola Di Pietro. Uh, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving as well. And I'd like to uh, congratulate my nephew for catching his first NFL touchdown pass Sunday. Yes. And who was that? Troy Fumagalli. Oh. Denver Broncos. Oh. They lost. <coughs> yeah, they lost. They yeah. lost. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a winner. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> Ward 4, Alderman Albert. What about your daughter? That's well, another I'll wait till she gets married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I also do want to just uh, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, and I really look forward to seeing everybody at the Winterfest. Uh, my family has a great time. It's it's an awesome opportunity to come out and see some beautiful lights, uh, also see Santa, like Scott was mentioning. A lot of fun activities, so hope to see everybody there. Alderman Kubal. Uh, Mayor, I'm just going to take a second opportunity to uh, congratulate staff on this uh, bond rating increase. Uh, that, that, that was really nice, and uh, I, I know there was a lot of effort put behind that, and, and the timing couldn't have been better for what lies ahead for the city. So it, it's, it's really great, and happy Thanksgiving to the residents of Crest Hill. Ward uh, 2, Alderwoman Gazal. I want to wish the staff again, good job on the bond, Ashley. You're doing an amazing job. Scott, I do want to thank you. You've been doing a lot in the city, and you can, you can see it. You can see your work, your hard work is finally showing up. With everything that you do, you don't get recognized enough. I want to thank you personally for that, for your hard work and your dedication. And I want to wish all the Crystal residents, staff, city staff, and city council a very blessed, happy Thanksgiving. And that's it. Other woman, Claire. Well, I would just like to wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your turkey. Ward one, Alderman Vershay. And beside the Well, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and thanks for doing a good job. Alderman and all Dyke. your cohorts were with you. Alderman Dyke. Yeah, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully, everyone takes a little time that day to think of all the things they're thankful for and how blessed we all really are. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Okay, public comment. If anyone would like to address City Council, need to step to the podium, state your, state your name for the record, your address okay, is optional. Let the record show that no one has approached the podium. To our uh, City Administrator, Heather, is there a need for an executive session? No, there is not, Mayor. Motion to adjourn, Mayor. Second. We have a motion for an adjournment by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderman Vershay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Joe Kubal? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Marco Cole de Pietro? <laughs> yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Barbara Scalera? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Scott Day? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Meeting is adjourned at 7 37 p.m.